What is going on YouTube? It is your boy Ricer Rob coming back at ya. I do have the GB4 on the desk in front of me along with a, a lot of notes and a blue printed wiring diagram that I made. I'm just trying to be really certain about everything that I'm doing in this install. I'm trying to make it as detailed as I can for you guys as well. There is not a lot of content of or videos uh, rather of doing the wireless, the two-step, the anti-lag, um, the port injection, all in uh, a singular video. So this is going to be a complete overview of kind of how JB4 goes into a vehicle. So, some of the wiring for the JV4 can be done inside. This is the JV4's wireless connect, allowing you to use your smartphone as a kind of an interface instead of using just the steering wheel. Has the blue wire coming off of it. We're going to take the little cap off, feed it through our red plug, and then this I have going to the red power splice wire that comes off of the DB25 harness. Uh, I will show you that up close in one second. Let me just tighten the connector for the tap. As an installation note, it is recommended to splice into this red wire, which again is coming off of the DB25 connector. Like, attaches to the JV4. It's recommended to splice in about an inch, inch and a quarter away from the uh, base of the wire. So, did that there. Now, the connector on this side is called the DB9 connector uh, because there are nine pinhole slots for wires to go through. We are going to remove the two screws. Make sure you don't lose the nuts on the back. Pop the cover off. The cover came right off. All the nuts stayed in the cover. One fell out. So just make sure you don't lose those. to our connector. So, if we look at the face of the connector, the bottom right is going to be pin 9876. Uh, the top, I'm actually unsure of which numbers they are, but I would assume this is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, for the two-step, we need to add a wire to pin slot number seven. So if we go to our two-step, which is this relay right here, there's a black and blue wire that are connected, a red and a white wire. We're gonna take the white wire and put that through spot number seven, which is a second from the left on the bottom. I'm just gonna insert that in there. You're gonna see it start to poke through. Now it's all the way through. Give it a little tug, make sure it's nice and snug in there. Now another wire we need to do in the same connector is for pin number nine. That's going to be for the port injection. Uh, that wire should be a yellow wire, so let's see. Injection, yellow wire. Uh, again, pin nine is the bottom right. So we're gonna put that in there. Make sure you try and do it as straight as you can. And there we go. It clicks in. It's all the way in there now. And I just wanted to show you guys closer up. That's for port injection and that's for the two-step relay. So now that we got those two in 
the DB9 connector, we grabbed our anti-lag wire, the black kind of T-spliced wire. And what we're gonna do is insert one of the pins into, I'm gonna say that's number four. And then the other one is going to go into, there's a series of connectors that are black and white. Uh, those are more on the left side of the engine bay. The black connectors on number 17, you're going to remove that wire and insert it in there. And that's going to be for this side uh, with the, the double wire on it. So this side is going into our second from the top right. We'll insert that the same way we did the others. snug pull test so now if uh, done correctly when looking at the uh, let's see the JB4 connect side of the harness the DB9 connector we should have now uh, bottom right is yellow uh, bottom second from the bottom left is white and then a second from the top right is black so on the T side of that black wire for the anti-lag that we had just did, there is this bigger connector that may have a different series of wire colors than you might be seeing, but this is a, what is it, a 23 pinned connector. Uh, it is labeled 1 and 23. Uh, I will try and show you that really quick. Not sure if it's going to focus enough, but right here you can see a little one, and right here you can see a little number 22. Uh, all these connectors are actually numbered as well, for your information. And again, like I mentioned, the wire colors might be different for your JB4, depending on what year it is. Looking at the female side of this connector, we see that 1 and 22. So this black T wire that is going to go in place of number 17, I believe. So if we just count back one, two, three, so forth until you get to 17, uh, let me just do that off camera and then uh, I will show you what to do next. Okay, so we found pin number 17. What we're gonna do is there is a little kind of a triangle on the top of the connector here. Just use something that you can get down in there, a pick, a knife, uh, maybe even a fork. And what you're gonna do is just pull that wire out of the connector. So I definitely need two hands for this. So let me do that and I will pick you back up in a second. is our wire removed from pin number 17 on the 22 wire connector harness. Now we're gonna take our black anti-lag wire, make sure our arrow is pointed up on the female side. Align it nice, clicks into place. On the male side, we're gonna do that same thing. There's a little uh, arrow on the top. connector wire connector plug should look like after the black anti-lag splitter wire is installed. All right, so now we have this gray subconnector. Uh, it's labeled 26 through 14 on the male side of the connector and one through 13 on the opposing side. Very similarly to what we just did, uh, we are now going to take our purple wire from our port injection controller, 
which again has a male and female kind of split T in there. We're just gonna do the same exact thing on number 21. So I will try and show you guys that and back to you when I'm done. Insert those pins right where they came out of. Get my tug, and they are good. So now our gray sub connector has a added purple and black T. All right, so our next one we're going to tackle is the orange wire on the port injection controller. The orange wire is for meth injection, or if you're running a secondary pump, uh, is a trigger wire. But we are not doing either of those, so this wire is actually not being used. The next wire we have coming up is, I guess we can do it black while we're talking about wires that we don't really have to do anything with. The black is going to go to the kind of strut tower ground. Uh, some people do it to their strut braces, uh, but I am going to use the ground by the jumper spot. The white wire is the next one we are going to tackle, which includes taking apart our DB25 connector, and we are going to insert the white wire into the meth spot number 15. That is going to be this one up here, I believe, somewhere on this thicker row of the cable. But I'm gonna pop the Phillips head screws off of the, oh, sorry, they are flathead screws off of the connector and we will take the clip off. Again, two little nuts are gonna fall out, so be sure to do this in a space where you are not gonna lose them. And then the two little screws that connect it into the JB4 also come out. So just be wary of that. See if there's any identifying markings on this. Oh, they actually are labeled. So, spot 15, I was mistaken, is on the bottom side, the smaller side, and it's gonna be that second from the left, the missing spot. So, let's grab that myth controller, port injection controller, and plug that right in to number 15. That's all set. All right, so next note is we have our red power wire that comes off of our main JB4 kind of harness section. There is a male and a female end. The male is going to go into the bottom green uh, connector in the kind of DME cover. I'll show you that when we get to the installing it into the car section but just note that this is going to go to pin spot number two on the bottom side of the connector. The wire you remove from there is going to be orange and that's gonna plug into this female side of the red power wire. Again, coming from the same harness that all of your sub connectors are connected to. Now, talking about the two-step relay, we again have white wire that we went and put that into our DB9 in the second from the bottom left. We have our ground that's actually attached to the blue, and then we have a red male. So this is going to go into spot number eight in that green connector that we were just talking about with the power wire for the JV4. The red is going to go into the connector, and the orange wire is going to actually plug into this blue and black uh, female wire. All right, now we are just putting back the covers for our DB25 and DB9 connectors. Mm -hmm. 
Another thing to mention is when you are putting these back together into the connector caps, make sure that you're not pinching any of your wires. There are, uh, or there is rather, plenty of space in the connector harness area to have the wires not be pinched. So just don't pinch your wires and you won't have electrical issues. And as the last step for what we can do inside, we're gonna take a flathead, pop the black top connector off of the JB4's kind of control board. And if you look, you'll see two long chips that are going to look a lot like your anti-lag chip. Now, the thing to note is, if you're looking at it from DB25 on the left, DB9 on your right, it's gonna be the one closer to the DB9 above the two uh, cylinders. All you're gonna do, kind of put pressure on it so that you're able to stick a flat head under and just kind of pry up nice and gently. And then you're just gonna remove the factory chip. Just like that. I'm gonna keep that in case you ever wanna sell it or go back to stock. And I'm just gonna make sure I put the writing the same direction as the others. I'm gonna make sure that I'm lining up my pins all nice and neat. This one came a little bent out of the package, but that's okay, we can just straighten that out. And you wanna make sure that, one, you're keeping this area really clean because it is all of your electronics. And just make sure those pins get lined up. So let me just kind of focus for a second. And just like that. Make sure you give it a nice press. Make sure the pins get all worked down into there. Just trying to give you a close up, but I don't think the camera wants to focus. But there's our new anti-lag chip installed. Now we can put our board back in our housing. Grab our top plate. Nice and in there. All right, we got our connector box all put back together. All we gotta do is put these two screws in to connect the DB25 connector to the They do include screws, which are different for the two sides. Just as a note, the DB25 are a little bit longer. They have, uh, I'm trying to show you, but there's a little bit of a silver kind of top blank, no threads on that section of the screw. But once you screw this connector in, then you're gonna do the same thing for the DB9. So I'm gonna throw this DB9 connector on and then I'll pick you guys back up. All right, so I just connected the two connectors to our JV4. Now all we have left is to do the ground for the meth controller, the power wire for the JV4, and then the power wire for the two-step. Uh, so once we, oh, I have another power wire. Uh, for the port injection controller. So that can actually get tapped into either of the ones that we're using uh, in the other power wires. But I will pick you guys back up when I am at the car. I will show you how to take the DME cover off and we will go from there. All right, YouTube, we are outside now. We have JB4 on the bench. We have our MHD dongle unboxed. And now we can start throwing this all in. So we do have the battery disconnected in the trunk. And then we're just gonna come over to the passenger side. And that's where we'll see the white DME cover. All right, so to unlock the cover there are these little tabs, little pictures on how to lock and unlock the cover. 
Let's see, we're gonna push this one this way. This one slides back. And over here as well. Should be able to remove this cover with the strut brace still installed. There we go. All right, so first there are a couple connectors at the top. Just gotta pull the little tabs and then you should be able to release them. There is actually two tabs. There's one. There's the back one. There's a green connector up front. Try to move these out of the way. There's a little pull tab on the end of the connectors to the DME. So this connector just pulls out and you should be able to just remove those top connectors. So we can pull these out of the way. Now, same thing on the other side. And we should be able to pull this one off as well. Alright, so to pull out these guys, we, there's a second little nub on the connector that you can just kind of pry the uh, clip out. Once you remove the clip, then you should be able to take out both of the connectors. So now the gray from the left, and I believe it was the black on the right. Yeah, black on the right for the right harness to the DME. And then if we do the same thing on this side, except I don't think we actually have to take anything off. We should just be able to pop these ones out. This one is white on the right and black on the left. All right, so now we can grab our JB4 and it looks like there's actually still a uh, old wire in here. I will just add it to the end of the red wire. I'm going to tuck some of our boxes kind of in their spots. So what I'm gonna do is put the port injection controller in this second to the back spot. I'm gonna put JB4 right in front of that. And I'm gonna put that with the quick connect side kind of facing out. Put this two-step relay in the front section. So this up here is our meth connection for this controller. Uh, so that's an easy plug, we'll do that later. This ground needs to go to this red dress up bolt. Hope I'm getting that on film. So anyway, now that we got all these, we can start with this one is a gray. So our gray is gonna go to gray and our arrows have to match up. So we'll do it like that. Make sure your pins are all nicely lined up.
boom, one connector done. So let's see, this is the DB25. We can connect to those same way. Arrows facing the same direction. controller arrows towards the sky and connect we have our white connector which goes to our white connector all right arrows towards me arrow towards me Make sure those pins go in the right spots. Push together. And again, you'll notice that there's channels in these connectors and there's a little stop at one end. Okay, so let's put these back in our connectors now. All right, sorry uh, for that mess in there, but I wanted to be really sure before I give you guys the wrong information. DB25, the biggest connector, goes on the left, on the left connector. The white connector goes on the right of that same left connector. The smaller one on the right, black on the left, gray on the right. Um, just again, making sure that all your connections are really solid and I'm able to now take these guys and put the little clips back in the ends of them. Uh, then I'll be able to insert the connector back onto the DME and I will continue wiring the front stuff. All right, so we got the connectors back on the DME. There is the green connector that is sitting in the front. You can see some pins. This is two, this is eight. Number eight is going to be for your red two-step. And number two is going to be for your JB4 power wire. There's a cap that covers the bottom section of this connector. You're just going to take a pick and push down on the little triangle, just like you did on the other connectors when we were wiring the JB4, and remove the wire. Then we're going to put the red two-step wire in spot 8, and again the JB4 power wire in spot 2. Just wanted to take a quick clip. I got everything reconnected. All of our power wires are in. Did the ground for our port injection controller and just going through again this orange wire is unused everything else looks good i'm just working on kind of tucking wires into the dme box and kind of uh making it so the cover can go back on so i will continue doing that and once i have the cover on i will pick you guys back up so we just got the DME cover back installed. I unfortunately did break off the black clip in the corner, so I do need to order a new DME cover, but hopefully that's not expensive. Everything else went on well. I uh, got the ground all tightened. The connector for the injector harness is on there now. My next step is going to be removing my nice BMS cowl filters so I can reinstall the factory cowl. I'm not taking any chances with the DME and honestly I'd like some protection over cylinders 5 and 6 so I will lose a little bit of intake noise but the HKS SSQV should be super loud and audible even if I lose intake noise but I also did the inlets and the outlets so I should actually gain some noise so We'll see once it comes time to drive it. All 
All right, well, I got the cowl back installed. The new one is all transferred with the gaskets and other hardware. I was able to retain using some of the dress up hardware with the factory cowl as well, so that was cool. The engine cover fits as well, but I did have to trim off basically this whole right side. But very factory looking. Basically, I'm just charging the battery, waiting for that to be good to go. And then tomorrow I will be flashing MHD as a backend flash map. I'm gonna roughly kind of walk you through that process on how to get your car backend flash MHD'd. And then I should be able to start up JB4 and kind of walk you through some of those menus. So thank you guys so much for watching. If uh, you wanna pick up any of these parts for yourself, then I will leave some links in the comments down below and drop a like if you found this helpful and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you guys and we will see you in the next one.